There's so much that shapes who and what we are. In a new series, Chronicles of KC, our goal is to provide you with some insight and perspective into how Kansas City came to be what it is today. We'll highlight some of the lesser known stories that are still relevant to the fabric of our community. 41 Action News anchor Kevin Holmes tells you the story of a house in Kansas City and its rich history, all thanks to a young millionaire. Home is where the heart is. And this home is in the middle of what used to be the heart of black Kansas City. Oh boy, how times have changed. You drive by this home on the outside and now we're on the inside. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, it looks like a beat up, dilapidated home, but there's a rich history here. There is a rich history that's not only relevant to Kansas City history, but to many facets of American history, to slavery to the recovery of that in America, to the harsh realities of it, Native American history. What's the other app? Uh, Zello? Z Zello, yeah. Zello? <laughs> yeah, telling you how much the property value is risk. Few websites can tell you about this home and its value. Accurately, that is. This was a parlor area. This house played host to the who's who of black America. First black heavyweight champion, Jack Johnson. Musicians Count Basie, Duke Ellington, just to name a few. You visit a city and you're among the celebrities. There are notable people of society and prominence that you want to get exposed to, that want to get exposed to you. There's, a, there's an echelon, so to speak. All to see one young woman. This was the introductory home to her in Kansas City of her family and where they set roots. The her Gene Willis is referring to is Sarah Rector. Who is Sarah Rector? Sarah Rector, there are many ways to go into who she was, but the, it, I think this starts with Sarah Rector was born uh, early 1900s, but in rural Oklahoma. In historian Diane Euston's blog, she explains the descendants of the Creek Indians born before 1906 were given land allotments, parcels. That included those released from slavery or freedmen like Sarah Rector and her family. The land was originally thought to be invaluable since it was just horrible for farming. They weren't going to give them the best, most fertile land, so they often got the rockiest soil. And at the time, Rector's family wasn't the wealthiest. In fact, to help pay the taxes on that parcel, Sarah's father leased it to Standard Oil Company. In 1913, an oil driller drilled a well on the property that produced a huge gusher. We're talking 2,500 barrels of oil a day. And Sarah... Overnight. Became the richest girl in America, <laughs> making more money than a president. They went from living in a two-room home to having headlines splashed across papers across the entire you know, nation talking about this 11-year-old girl from Taft, Oklahoma. Historian that Diane Houston says that little girl got fame, after. fortune, <laughs> even marriage proposals. But it wasn't happily ever after in Oklahoma. And, and there was also a real danger to freedmen living in the area. Especially rich ones. That's what brings us here to this home, 2000 East 12th in Kansas City. This, folks, is where the legend of the millionaire Sarah Rector starts. And for many, it's just that, a legend. In fact, if you Google Sarah Rector's name, most of the images you see, I'm told, are not really Sarah Rector. In fact, I'm also told there's one in the Smithsonian that is not Sarah Rector. This coming to me from her three nieces, whom I sat down with. You'll hear their story on the next installment of Chronicles of Casey.